Thanks for listening to the Cross Point Church audio podcast. Whether you're catching up because you missed a service or you just stumbled across us on the web, we're glad that you're here. Don't forget to subscribe and for more information about Cross Point and how you can be a part of the story that God is writing, visit crosspointoc.com. One of my favorite stories is about this girl that grew up on a farm and her dad ran a grocery store. So she was always there at the grocery store with her dad and, and the milkman would come in. Now, some of you are too young. You have no idea what the milkman is, but so, some of you are aware. The milkman would come into the grocery store and every time he would come in, he would see this little girl and he would rub her on her head and he'd say, how's my little Miss America? And he did that day after day. Week after week, month after month, year after year, how's my little Miss America, he would say. And whenever she was in junior high, she began thinking, maybe I could be Miss America. And then in high school, she started entering these pageants. And when she finally won Miss America in 1980, Cheryl Pruitt gave credit to the milkman (laughs) and to God for giving her beauty, skill, and talent She said, these words shape me. I love that story. And I'll never forget it. And it's influenced me. Uh, Some of you know I have a daughter that's eight years old. So constantly I rub her on the head and say, how's my little Miss Millionaire? (laughs) Gonna grow up, take care of her daddy. After the nine o'clock service, I was on the patio and they came up and they said, you mean billionaire? Because, you know, when she grows up, everybody's going to be a millionaire. I don't know about all that. Words, they shape us, don't they? Words are not simply sounds that cause the air passing through our larynx to create these sounds. Words have real power. You know, whenever I think about words, I think about God and the power of God's words. If you go back, back, back to the very beginning, you can read Genesis chapter one and it says that God spoke the world into existence. It says in the beginning, God said, let there be light. And there was what church? There was light. God spoke, his words were so powerful. And and as I begin to think about God's words, I couldn't help but think about our words because of all the creatures on the planet, Think about all the animals and the insects and, you know, the the reptiles and, and the animals that are in the water and out of the water. And only man has the ability to communicate through the spoken word. It is a unique and powerful gift. I love what Solomon says in Proverbs. Solomon was the wisest man to ever live. He prayed and God gave him wisdom. And as you read through the Proverbs and you read through Ecclesiastes, that's Solomon giving us this wisdom. And here's what he said. He said in Proverbs chapter 12 and verse six, our words have the power to what church? How many of you have been destroyed by words in the past? I think most all of us could raise our hand. He says that our words have the power to destroy, but they also have the power to what church? To build up. You ever been encouraged? You ever been built up by words? Solomon went on in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. And he said, I want us to read this together. You ready church? The tongue has the power of life and death. You know, words, they do more than just convey information. The power of our words, they can build people up, but they can also destroy people as well. They can deflate people. They can stir up hatred and violence. We know this is true because you can look on your smartphone today or turn on your television today. And as we just examine the political landscape of our country, you will see what words can do. So my question today is this. Do you use your words to hurt or to help? Are you using your words? Are they filled with hate or love? Bitterness or blessing? Are you using your words for complaints or for compliments? For lust or love? For victory or for defeat? There's this Christian band that that I like. They're called Building 429. 
And the reason why they chose to name their band Building 429 is because they said that they wanted to have lyrics and they wanted to be able to create words and pen words that build people up. So they said, we're gonna call it Building. And then they called it 429 based upon this verse in Ephesians that Paul penned in Ephesians chapter four, verse 29, that says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of our mouths. In the Greek, that word unwholesome, it means foul talk. It means talk that's gonna destroy, talk that's gonna tear people down. And, and Paul said, don't let that come out of your mouth. It says instead, only use words that are helpful for building others up. According to, and this is two words I wanna focus on today, their needs. So we're gonna use our words to build people up according to their needs that it may, keyword, benefit those who listen to our words. Now we're in a parenting series today. And as we're talking about parenting, we're talking about words and the way that we express our words. I lost my prop today. So you're just gonna have to use your imagination. I, I lost it somewhere. It must be down on the next step center is I bet where, where it's sitting at today. My prop is found from Colossians chapter four and verse six. It says this, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt. I had a salt shaker today. <laughs> and as you think about a salt shaker, and as you think about salt today, you know, how many of you like salt on your food? I like salt. I, Anybody like me, you go to the Mexican restaurants and, and at the beginning you get the chips that come out and, and those chips never have enough salt on them, right? What do you gotta do? You gotta get the salt out. You gotta, you gotta salt the chips because it brings out the flavor. That's what Paul is saying. Is Paul is saying that we should make sure that we flavor our words, that they're seasoned with salt. But did you know that you can put too much salt on as well? And if you put too much salt on, what's going to happen is it's going to raise your blood pressure and too much salt over a long period of time. What it can do is it can cause a heart attack or it can cause a stroke because of too much salt. We're going to talk about that today when it comes to parenting and when it comes to our words of making sure that it's seasoned with just the right amount of salt. Let our conversation be full of grace. Jesus said this. He says, the words that we speak are the overflow of our heart. That what comes out of our mouth is an extension of our heart. So if we believe Jesus, that our words are tied to our heart, then you have to believe that whenever Jesus comes into your heart and you ask him to come into your life, to be the boss, the coach, and the CEO of your life, that he's gonna change you from the inside out. And that is going to change your words. Because if your heart changes, your words should also change as well because they're connected to the same place. And if you have problems with the words, I would go a little further and say, check your heart because that's the deeper issue as well is what's going on inside of our heart. Do you want to know immediately how to know if your child needs encouragement? I want to give you a foolproof plan so that you know every single time so you can recognize it to know when your kid, when your child, when your grandchild needs encouragement. You ready? Here it is. If they're breathing. If they're breathing, they need encouragement. If you're breathing, you need encouragement. We all know this is true because one of our deepest cravings is to be encouraged. I don't know about you, but I've never met anybody that said, stop encouraging me, that's enough. That's all I can take. I don't want any more encouragement. I don't need any more specific praise. That's good enough. I had it up to here with encouragement. I've never met anybody like that, have you? See, encouragement is oxygen for the soul. And as soon as it happens, we can't wait for the next time it happens as well. Mother Teresa said this, kind words can be short and easy to speak, but their echoes are truly endless. The power of life and the power of death is found in the tongue. Now today I'm gonna take a little turn on you as we're talking about the fifth and the final bad mistake that good parents make, I wanna challenge you today to appraise your praise, 
to appraise your praise. And you might be thinking that this, this fifth one today is like verbally abusing your child or not encouraging your child enough. And that's not what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about is it's not verbal abuse, but praising the wrong things. Praising the wrong things is one of the bad mistakes that I believe good parents make. And it's a very easy trap to fall into. Now, I believe we would all agree that we want our kids to get plenty of encouragement, right? I mean, that's why we lavish them with so much praise and complimenting every move and affirming every trait imaginable. And this constant praise, it's meant to be like the angel on their shoulder that's reminding them how great, how awesome they are when you're not around, right? I mean, that's why we encourage. And praise and affirmation have become prevalent in our society. I mean, it used to be in generations before that you didn't get very much encouragement. Some of you grew up and you never heard your mom or your dad say they love you very often. That wasn't part of their generation. But one of the things that I've seen is I've seen the pendulum actually swing to the other side now to where there is an abundance of praise. There is an abundance of affirmation. And when you tell your teens, you're awesome. You're the best singer in the world. You're the best pitcher. You're the best quarterback. You're the smartest. You may be diminishing your words. See, it's supply and demand. With such a large supply, the demand is in, has decreased. And in addition to turning up the volume of our praises, I also believe that we've become a little bit careless with the content. Without thinking, we make these flattering remarks that feel very good in the moment, but they may steer our children in the wrong direction. I want you to hear me out on this because scripture specifically says in Ephesians 4.29, that we're to use words that are helpful for building others up according to their needs. So we need to make sure that we use our words that's gonna build them, encourage them, that's gonna help them according to their needs along the way. I, I, I love that, but we need to appraise our praise. So here's the, here's the thing, here's the thought. If the goal is self-esteem and we're praising our kids because we wanna build their self-esteem, I'm not so convinced that's the best way to build their self-esteem. I, I believe mastering difficult tasks and persevering through difficult times and them getting on the other side and making meaningful contributions boosts someone's self-esteem more than kudos. Last Sunday, uh, last weekend, last Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I was invited to speak at a conference in, in Atlanta. And, and uh, one of the other speakers was uh, Dr. Tim Elmore. Uh, he is the leading voice in the country right now on millennials. And uh, he's been hired by four professional sports teams just to come in to help them when it comes to millennials, to help them be successful as they're navigating through uh, professional sports. He also is one of the keynote speakers every year when all the presidents of the universities come together and they're studying millennials together. And he's a leading voice. He's, he's written more on the subject of millennials than anyone else. And he says more study has been done on millennials than anyone else. And so here's, here's what Tim Elmore said. I, I thought it was fascinating. He said, flattery focused on smarts, looks, or talent can do more harm in this generation than good. Without realizing it, we're reinforcing cosmetic features, and these are things that are not in their control. So when we say, you're smart, you're beautiful, you're gifted, you're sharp, he says, we must affirm effort and behavior, which are in their control, instead of characteristics that are out of their control. That's fascinating. This is focusing more on the process than the outcome. This is us praising hard work, their diligence, their practice, more than praising the trophy that they get or the win that they get at the end of the game. Tim Elmore goes on. He, he begins to talk about two different mindsets that people have. We can have a growth mindset or we can have a fixed mindset. Many of us know people that have a fixed mindset to where their mindset doesn't change. And they say, I have 30 years of experience. When actually that's not really true. What they have is they have one year of experience. They've done the same thing for 30 years. 
because they've had a fixed mindset that never changes. The opposite of that is having a growth mindset. This is we're willing to adapt, we're willing to learn. It goes back to our, our core value here at Crosspoint. This is we're about relentless improvements that we want to continue to keep growing, that God has called us to continue to be conformed to the image of his son. And that can't happen with a fixed mindset. Tim Elmore goes on, he, he explains this, this fixed mindset a little bit more. And he says, this is what we have to be careful of with millennials. As we've told them so much how smart they are and how intelligent they are, that they now say this, well, I'm so smart, I'm so intelligent. It's just who I am. So I shouldn't have to try hard that becomes a fixed mindset and it's dangerous. Jennifer Anderson from the New York Times said this, praise aimed at performance is like crack for kids. Once they get it, they need it and they want more. And the real world doesn't praise them for getting dressed in the morning. <laughs> Jen Berman, an author went on and said, we're becoming praise junkies as parents. We've gone to the opposite extreme of a few decades ago when parents tended to be more strict. And now we overpraise our children. Now I'm not telling you encouragement is bad. Remember what Solomon said, the tongue has the power of life and death. I just think we need to encourage the right things. I read that HR departments, as the millennial generation is, is now the largest workforce, they're the largest number of people in the workforce right now, the millennials. So HR departments and companies are beginning to hire praise consultants to keep up with the affirmation that's needed for the millennials. The University of Minnesota said, children addicted to praise become insecure and anxious if they don't receive accolades for every positive success. Did you know that this generation has more anxiety than any other generation in history? And I don't think it's their fault. I think we've done it to them. Why? Because we want them to make sure that they are the best athletes that they can be. And that's what we praise. And we want to make sure that they're the best musicians that they can be. So that's what we praise. And all at the same time, we want them to get the best grades that they can be. So that's what we praise. And here's what happens today. They say that 78% of millennials admit to cheating today. Why do they do that? Because they crave our affirmation and our praise. Because they've had it their entire life. And I believe that the power of life and death is in the tongue. And we have to be careful that the power of death doesn't just come from negative words, but death can also come from praising the wrong things and putting the wrong things up on a pedestal. Tim Elmore went on and said this, with truckloads of praise, kids have a hard time distinguishing what fits them and what doesn't. And as they grow older, this is interesting, they realize, catch this, mom is the only one telling them that they're awesome. And they begin to question her judgment. And teenagers believe that teachers praise the ones who need praise. It's not a sign you did well, but that you lack ability. Tim Elmore says the danger, if this is the only kind of praise a child hears, is he'll think he needs to achieve to win your approval. He'll become afraid that if he doesn't succeed, he or she will fall off the pedestal and his parents won't love him anymore. So praising specific traits like intelligence and prettiness and athleticism, it can really undermine your child's confidence later. Because if they grow up believing that they're valued for something that's out of their control, it's potentially fleeing. If you praise your child primarily for being pretty, for example, what happens whenever she grows older and loses the beauty? How many facials will it take for her to feel worthwhile? So what's the antidote? I think it's praising the effort rather than the result. It's praising the creativity. It's praising the hard work. It's praising the persistence that goes into the achieving more than the achievement itself. So what is the right amount of praise? I'm convinced that we are to build each other up. I like building 429. I want that to be a mantra for me as well. So I'm not saying eliminate it. I'm just saying be very specific about it. If the praise is genuine and focused on effort, 
Give it as often as your child does something that warrants a verbal reward. I love what Proverbs 25 says. Solomon said this, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Another way of saying this, I love the message translation. It said the right word at the right time is like a custom made piece of jewelry. I want to just tell you the story today about this boy as we close named Connor Stroud. And I believe that his parents did it right. They focused more on the process than the actual outcomes. They focused more on, on his working towards the achievement than the actual achievement. I want you to watch this video today of Connor Stroud. The thing that's interesting about Connor is he said, he said the hard work is hard but it's worth it. It's what brings the results along the way. Uh, he was named the number one junior tennis wheelchair player in the world. He was born on April 7, 2000, a bit different than most. He suffered a birth defect that caused him to be born without hips, ankles, or knees. And by age two, his parents, imagine this, his parents consulted with the doctors and his parents decided with the doctors that it was best to have his two feet removed. They said, it was the most difficult decision they ever had to make. Can you imagine making that decision as a parent? At age four, he began playing tennis and his mom tried to persuade him to play wheelchair tennis right off the bat, thinking that it would be easy for him to be competitive. But he proved her wrong. She said, this was her struggle. She said, you don't want your kids to struggle. And she says, I wasn't even sure that he'd be able to compete she said, winning is in everything, but I wasn't even sure if he'd be able to win one point. He began playing in these eight and under tournaments and he started having success. And as he said, winning didn't come without hard work and training. And Connor said that his greatest challenges weren't physical. His greatest challenges were mental. He said, the most frustrating thing is being unable to get to the ball when people hit it away from me. And he said, but I continue to work hard and my parents encourage my hard work. And he said, all I can do is try to stay positive and not let it get to me. His mom said, it's the battle within that has molded him and is such a strong person and an inspiration to so many people. And I believe this is the department that his parents have been stellar because each step of the way, they affirmed Connor's ambition and they praised his efforts, not his wins. They focused on what he has on the inside more than what he lacks on the outside. They didn't gloss over the challenges, but they affirmed the process more than the trophy at the end. Church, I believe the power of life and the power of death is found in the tongue.